All right, welcome into another special edition of the 2022 MLB Draft Show. A, a special edition, like I said, we have uh, one of the the scouting community greats here. We got Brian Bridges, uh, currently the national uh, supervisor, cross checker for the San, uh, San excuse me uh, San Francisco Giants, as well as formerly the scouting director of the Atlanta Braves. Um, and Brian, I, I'm excited to talk with you, man. We we've talked enough over the over the last few years. It's nice to kind of put a face to the name and uh, chat in person, if you will. Yeah, likewise. I feel the same, and thank you for having me on, for sure. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, let's start back uh, Let's start back a ways. So you were with the Giants for uh, from 2007 to 2019, scouting director uh, 2014 to 2019. And for those that are watching and listening to this, Brian was instrumental in, in the drafting of Jason Hayward and Kimbrell, Alex Wood, Mike Miner, and then world champions like Mike Soroka, Austin Riley, AJ Minter, uh, Ian Anderson, Tucker Davidson, Kyle Wright. I mean, kind of you have your fingerprint all over that organization, Brian. So um, I guess my first question would be, you know, how does it feel to see kind of your hard work pay off and see those guys bring home a ring? Well, it is it is uh, very pleasing to see, you know, with the eyes and the fact that Alex and his crew, you know, kept those kids together, you know, keeping them together is just as important as anything else and develop them and Snicker and his staff finishing them off at the major league level. It was good to see Kyle Wright kind of turn the corner finally this year in the World Series, which, you know, it's tough to do. But, you know, he kind of, you know, had a different look about him and it was good to see. And, you know, that that's kudos to that player development and all those guys over there for sure. But it was it was fun to watch, and um, you know I couldn't be happier for that organization and all those people over there for sure. You said Kyle Wright has a has a different look about him. What was your kind of philosophy? What were what were some of the pillars that you had in Atlanta for for taking so many arms in the draft? Because you guys just hit on arm after arm after arm. Well, um, you know, a lot of it you want to talk about, and then there's a lot of it you don't. You know, you kind of have. It, it's kind of one of those things in being around, you know, Roy Clark and Tony DeMacio and and uh, Donnie Rowland and Stan Meek and and even the great Paul Snyder. When you start talking about the guys I've been exposed to in my scouting career, one thing they all had in common, you know, was drafting good players and good pitching. And uh, one thing, it, it's just, you know, it's about athleticism. It's about how it works. And, you know, so much of it now has gotten caught up into how hard you throw versus, you know, throwing strikes. You know, one thing you can always say about Ian Anderson, he threw strikes. Kyle Muller, I saw him punch out 18 guys in a row <laughs> in a high school game. You know, uh, Bryce Wilson, same way. You know, a lot of strikes. Those guys filled the zone up as amateurs. And, you know, it wasn't that 98, 99, you know, topping out, but those guys knew what they were doing with the ball. And to get guys out, you know, Colby Allard, Mike Soroka was 90, 93 when we took him. I mean, but what's the key ingredient? The key ingredient is pitching. It's throwing strikes, being able to change speeds, being able to locate your stuff and uh, really repeat your delivery. And, you know, I'd be reminisced, you know, if I didn't say that uh, – Dom Cheedy and Dave Wallace played a big part in that as well as, you know, Jonathan Sherholtz being the farm director and, and how they handled those kids because we gave them birth in the organization. I think everybody on the scouting staff did an outstanding job, but those guys finished them off. And with over 85 years of experience through the minor leagues and in the big leagues with Dom Cheedy and Dave Wallace, you couldn't ask for two better people and the coaches along the way that they had in the minor leagues. You've been doing this for 25 years, man. You've been at this forever. Um, it sounds like some of the advent in in data and you know numbers analysis has kind of changed your job quite a bit. How much has your job changed over the last 25 years, for better or for worse? Um, well, definitely for the better, as far as you know, having the ability and working with the people that I work with, like I said, to be able to move up in the game. Mm -hmm. And for worse, I don't think there's really a for worse. You know, it's kind of like being over here with Farhan now and understanding and Michael Holmes and understanding 
a little bit more of the analytical side. I think, you know, the good part of it is, it's like, uh, you know, uh, we have an outstanding guy um, in our office that does our analytics, uh, Paul Bien, and I'll see a player and it's kind of a checks and balances. And I think, you know, Paul does an outstanding job with how, how he presents it. And I think that how it translates into what we're doing as an organization. And, uh, you know, I've kind of learned that, you know, um, you know, we've always kind of done analytics, but not to the extent to what it is now. You know, you always, yeah. I mean, even as a young scout, you go, okay, you go to a college game, you see a guy and you go, okay, now let me get the stats, right? <laughs> then you look at the stats and you go, oh boy, how am I going to sell this one, right? You know, strike out <laughs> to high or, you know, I yeah. mean, it's, it, it's one of those things, but now it's just so much deeper and in, in, in depth, but, uh, you know, with Scott Harris and, 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 um, you know, and, and Michael coming from the analytical side, as far as, you know, how Oakland done their business, I think it's, it's been good for me. It's been, you know, more complete, I think is the complete understanding of how that stuff works and, and how they look at things a little bit differently. So I don't think it's ever for worse. I think you just, yeah. you know, always, always tell kids at camp, you know, it's like anything how did the dinosaurs become extinct, right? They couldn't adapt. So yeah. you have to adapt to what's going on. You have to adapt moving forward. But, you know, I think that, you know, there's certain things that kids need to realize. And I think they don't need to, as amateurs, to jump in the analytics as much as they're jumping into it. Let yeah. other people do that. And them not worry so much about it, you know, as far as, learn how to hit, learn how to drive the ball, learn how to play the game, learn how to throw strikes, let other people worry about the other stuff. And those kids just need to go play. And, and the game will be in a better place if kids thought along those lines and quit worrying about the other stuff. Do you find yourself actively trying to learn the analytical side of the game or do you kind of use it as more of a like you said almost a checks and balances like i think what i'm seeing with my eyes is pretty special and then you go to i think you said his name was scott scott am i right here uh, no it's paul paul bn paul yeah i'll send him a, yeah i'll send him a message and you know i'll say you know i'll say hey this is what i'm seeing and he'll say hey man you're right on you know that's what we're seeing on this side too so you know, you can use it as a checks and balances and definitely on the flip side, when you see a guy, there's something you like, but you're not sure because most of the time we go in, we one look a guy or we get a guy out of the pen. We may see nine pitches. I mean, no one's that good, but yeah. <laughs> you know, having Paul to kind of go back to where you have multiple innings and Hey, all right, I got him or well, I didn't see that, you know? So it kind of helps paint the picture you know, from a scouting standpoint, analytically, you know. I want to talk about some of your first few years here with the Giants. Um, you guys have gone with Hunter Bishop, Patrick Bailey, Will Bednar, I mean, accomplished uh, college performers. And then uh, some deeper cuts, you know, Kyle Harrison has turned himself into a monster. And I think, you know, Nick Swinney is one of those guys that I guess the metrics would support him being a really dynamic arm. How are things a little bit different in San Francisco uh, than how you did things in Atlanta? Well, I mean, I guess the two differences is, you know, which I don't think really, I mean, it's, it's kind of like how these drafts have set up, you know, the past few years in Atlanta, those years, it was high school pitching. I mean, you had a plethora of arms that you could just kind of go grab or, or set up your draft that way here lately. It hasn't been that. And I think, you know, Michael's done a great job of taking, you know, which the goal is to try to get players that can play in October. I mean, it's not just the draft guys. So I think, you know, with him and, and Farhan, they've done a great job of trying to add those kind of pieces and being able to, you know, get quality value. They've stretched the draft out. I mean, Kyle Harrison, you know, where they took him and, and, you know, God willing and everything stays on course. I mean, he's got a chance to do some special things in his career. So, you know, being able to get guys down in the draft and, and kind of stretching it out a little bit, but still getting, you know, 
what the staff and what Michael's kind of pushing is to get guys to everybody should want to get guys to play in October. If not in five years, nobody's going to have a job. Yeah. Nobody will care if you're just a superstar in July. Won't last that long. Yeah. Um, 25 years. Uh, is there a guy that stands out as, you know, I saw this guy on a, you know, cold February morning and it's just different than anyone else I ever saw. Any, any one guy in 25 years that stands out. One guy in 25 years that stands out. Well, there's one I've, I've kind of talked about it here lately. I mean, the one I really missed on was, you know, he just retired from our organization, Buster Posey. You know, I love that kid as a hitter, a player, and everything. And in a high school, I mean, I was convicted into the player. And when I start, you know, when I – I just screwed that one up, you know. I mean, basically <laughs> because – I was more convicted in the player and then let the rest take care of itself. But when we were, when we were coaching the East coast showcase team, I'll never forget it. As long as I live is uh, we were playing the Florida team and we had the bases loaded and I said, Buster get a helmet. There was nobody else I wanted at the plate other than Buster. And he hit a triple into the gap and we scored three runs and subsequently won the game. But like the great scout that I ain't, I uh, went and scouted him as a pitcher. So, you know, subsequently, that's the one that I really feel like, you know, if you've ever a great player that you saw, a great player that you believed in, but you just didn't go all the way in on. And for whatever reason, I don't know how I screwed that up. But any time that I wanted, you know, at that East Coast or any time that I'd ever saw him, I just got caught up into the pitching side with Buster instead of what he provided as a position player. And, so he just went on to Florida State. John Barr, who still works with us, picked yeah. him. And what a great career and, you know, what a heck of a human being. Hey, man, all roads lead to San Francisco on your end, kind of ironically. <laughs> you got a yeah, second chance right. there on the, at the twilight. Um, yeah. All right, man. Well, I'll leave you with this last question. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but um, – what are we what are we looking at here for the 2022 draft? What are some narratives you're seeing here early? What are your initial kind of surface level thoughts of this class that we have in front of us? I think you have uh, there's some short stops in this class. It's not very deep, but there are some. Um, there's some power arms in this class. Uh, you know, I was actually at the game when Crawford went down, you know, this fall. I feel sorry for him. He's a great yeah. kid, but you know, there's kind the of a don't see that every day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they were stretching him out to start him, which I would too, because how easy he did it. But uh, you're going to see a lot of prep, uh, probably some prep guys at the top and uh, some college guys trying to work their way in there as well. Some teams may view it differently, but you got some outfielders, you get some guys that know how to swing the bat. And I also say this is the year of the changeup on the amateur side. I think I've seen more guys be able to throw a better changeup this past summer than I have in summers past. So, you know, it's it's a wide open uh, type of a draft. It's it's not uh, kind of pigeonholed one way or another. It's you know you got some pitching, you got some position players, you got or infielders, you got some outfielders. So it's gonna be it's gonna be wide open. I got one more question just for you philosophically. Um, every scout is different. Do you value a high school amateur's ability to spin a baseball more or them to show feel for a, for a changeup? It all comes down to spin. You can't survive without being able to spin it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when they go out there, you know, they're not used to throwing every fifth day. And when they go out there, there's going to be days that a young amateur is going to go out there and, He's not going to have that, you know, his good fastball. And what can he go back to at that point? You know, most good pitching coaches, definitely in professional baseball, they've been around so much that they can teach you a change up. You can either spin it or you can't. Yep. <laughs> Love it, Brian. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, man. It's been a pleasure. Uh, like I said, it's a pleasure kind of getting to know you over the last few years. And I know you're going to continue to do big things with the Giants. Thank you, and uh, go Giants, for sure.